Reporting on the games you love by people who love to game. The MMO Reporter Network. Listening to Lotro Reporter on the MMO Reporter Network, brought to you by Audible.com. Check out the newest audiobooks at audibletrial.com/mmo reporter, and by Doghouse Systems. Use the coupon code MMO Reporter at checkout and get a free solid-state drive with your next PC. Welcome to Lotro Reporter, episode 295. I'm your host, Carrie, and I am joined this week, as always, by the best dress warden on Brandywine, Leonor. How you doing, Leonor? Yay! That's a good thing. Yay? <laughs> Yay! I'm happy. Ah, uh, that's good. Why, why are you happy? Um, I'm happy for a few reasons. Um, first of all, um, I am back at my house again. So I got my old computer. Uh, unfortunately, my old computer doesn't know who I am right now because it's just updating and updating and updating. It's about, it's about a month and a week's worth of, uh, updates. But I'm happy. I'm happy I'm back. What's up? Well, welcome back. <laughs> Happy to have you. So, um, did you do anything in game this week, then? Uh, no. No? Nope. And I, I said it earlier, and I'll say it right now. Somebody said that I need to stop answering things in one-syllable words. Okay. Well, that that's that's how we discovered that um, my recording wasn't working. I was going to, to, I was going to mention how I noticed when we record that my green peaks on the recording software are, there are a lot more of them than yours. Yes. Um, and then I went to look <laughs> and suddenly I had no green peaks and I'm like, Oh, that's <laughs> not good. So I, I'm glad you mentioned one syllable words. Thank you. Whoever told him that he's using one syllable words. Woo! You saved our show. <laughs> <laughs> and um, then we, yeah. my, my, my eyes switch up on me a whole lot when I'm reading and it's quite a problem when I'm just, like reading live. That's why Carrie reads a lot of the stuff and does the news. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, and then we also forgot to mention this is episode 295. We're five episodes away from yes. 300. Yeah. Kind of excited about that. Yeah. Pretty awesome. Yeah. We were trying to decide if we had done half the shows or not. I think we've done close to half of them. Yeah, we we did close to half of them. I don't know exactly what we're going to do for that episode yet. Maybe maybe we will go and uh, get some spears and some giant sh shields. Okay. And we'll we'll run around in thongs? No. And and protect Sparta. Wrong nerddom. We can, we can. But it's I I don't think Sparta's in middle earth. <laughs> <laughs> All we need is a well. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> and and there goes putting this on the resume. Because we decided after like three years of this, we should be professionals. Clearly we're not. <laughs> no way. <laughs> All right. And poor chat room. Okay. Um, I have been doing the Haunted Burrow Festival or the Fall Festival. Um, I usually just do the Haunted Burrow because going to the different areas and doing those tricky trove quests, it's like, why would you, the person be at the Bree fields to give me the quest to go all the way into the town of Bree to do this? They have to come back out to her. Mm -hmm. There's no easy way to it's They don't. It's not like there's a horse. I mean, there is a horse, but not really. <laughs> You can go to Headsetter's Farm and then ride halfway across the field to get back to the festival grounds. But anyway, yeah, it's, I, a, it's a little goofy. I remember doing that stuff. Uh, that's when I was going for titles. Yeah, no, um, I will do the um, tricks and troves and tricks in um, in Mickle um, Hobbiton because it's right there. I will do if I find myself in. Um, 
the uh, Kellendom or the the dwarf area, I will do those. They're a little, but I usually don't go that go out that far to do quests for the that festival because mm-hmm. there's not a whole lot to do. Open geodes, do tricks and tro- tros and tricks, and then go to the next place is pretty much the extent of it. Mm-hmm. So you don't really do the haunted barrows that much. I do do the haunted burrow. Um, okay. I I will run through that. Though I do not do the race ones because running through there so fast, trying to prove I was there, I get sick. Um, oh. You know, with the ones that you go into the one wing, you do what you need to do, and you come out in a certain length of time. I can do that no problem. Mm-hmm. But running through, especially when you know you run through and it gets dark and then stuff starts. I, I get motion sick um, about the time I get through the second one of those. And I'm like, no, it's not, um, it's not worth the six festival tokens to me. I, yeah, I, I remember that stuff. I think I, I think I used, well, there's actually two ways you can do this. Uh, first of all, you can turn your camera all the way up. So it looks like you're looking down on your character. Mm-hmm. That might help. Uh, the second thing is, since uh, the festival is pretty much new yet and it's going to be running for a little while, what you do is you take one of your characters, uh, your other characters, and you park them at the end. And okay. you keep gathering those two chests that keep giving you tokens. Uh-huh. And those tokens are account-wide. Oh, that's... So you just keep smart. logging in and getting those two tokens. And uh, sometimes you'll get five, sometimes you'll get three. But... Uh, yeah, and you'll get some other items too. But yeah, uh, once every hour you can log in and grab those two tokens. That's a good idea. Um, I I had enough. I just need to get the horses and the the. Oh, Leonor, that dress, the new festival dress. Oh yes, uh-huh. you gotta show me a picture. I, I waited. I didn't want to see it oh, until, okay. I, until I got on the show. Of course, I have to. Hang on, let me find one. Okay. Uh. I have to talk to you. Uh. uh warrior poet here real quick uh okay. while, while you're doing that um uh last week last week's show you were you were messaging me and saying hi and what's up and stuff and now this week you're messaging me again and last last week i there was a person that said that i don't talk much on the show oh. <laughs> so you shush you <laughs> Okay, so you got a picture for me? Yeah, well, I've got a picture here. Yeah, I'll think it in possibly Gondorian or Rohirrim. That is yeah. really nice. Isn't it? That yeah, is that really, one. really nice. It's It doesn't have a whole heck of a lot of detail on it, like swirlies or, or um, uh, uh, um, branches like some of the other ones. A lot of them had branches for this time of year. You know the patterns uh-huh. that run them. But yep. yeah, this is really nice. This is just a simple, yeah, new new style dress. Yeah, I like that. But, uh, yeah, and I was like, and it looks really good on an elf. I mean, it looks okay on a hobbit. It looks oh, I bet. Really, really good on an elf. It's it's amazing. I'm like, oh, I'm so excited. Um, and then I forgot to mention last last week on the show that I, you know, two weeks ago we were talking about, you know, we're going to have to branch out and we're going to look at the, the Lord of the Rings RPG, right? Yes. And I get in my inbox a notification from the Bundle of Holding people, which if you have not checked out Bundles of Holding, they're pretty awesome. They're um, bundles of PDFs of RPGs, um, older and newer, newer. They had the Lord of the Rings RPG, the one that is by... Um, uh cubicle seven entertainment um that's wow that's old yeah so i've got the one ring role-playing game the lore master screen and lake town guide darkening of mirkwood and its companion gazetteer the heart of the wild rivendell and tales from the winterland wow yeah for about 28 bucks I looked at those, I think I looked at those ones, and those were the ones that had some really weird classes in them, because it's really hard to make classes for Lord of the Rings in the first place. And the that book, the main book, was just, it was like some crazy weird classes. It's been a while. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I haven't looked at it in quite a while. Yeah. Mainly, I was just trying to get some ideas to talk about what this game did so we can talk about putting those classes or something close to them into Lord of the Rings online. 
but they were so crazy that I decided not to mention them. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Yeah, there. I haven't actually read it or downloaded it, but I, I did buy it. I'm going to do some reviewing on it. Um, somebody's asking about Golden Star. Um, they do still play Lotro. Um, she just played yesterday. Yes, yeah, she, um, she does her dumb group still. Um, she and Baby Hobbit are playing together now. I think Baby Hobbit has a computer and they they play with her a little bit or, or have been. Um, but not nearly as much as they they did before. Mm -hmm. But yeah, um, they do play. Yeah. And um, I, you know, Baby Hobbit's grown up. She's doing stuff like karate and singing songs, and you know, being a six year old who's in first grade. Believe it or not. So, but yeah. Okay. So what's the, what's the name of the company that uh, sent you that? Um, the the name of the company that that produced the role playing game. Or that sends me the bundles. Sends you the bundles. Um, it's our, our drive through RPG. drive through RPG. Okay, guys. If, if you're listening to this episode, you guys <laughs> need to get the whole bundle of chill. I, we looked. <laughs> you guys yeah. had a few bucks. But you need the whole bundle of chill. I want all that stuff. I want it. I had it all. I don't have it anymore. I want it. Okay. That's it. Okay. Hang on. I got to block somebody else. Well, we've made we've made the the big time the uh we're getting tr we're getting bots yay i kind of feel special i mean we haven't had bots for a while <laughs> yeah yeah that that shows you know like we are being watched yes um speaking of being watched um we we have 29 of our favorite people who like to i guess check us out <laughs> Awesome. That was going really badly. <laughs> we'll just go with that. <laughs> I'd like to support us in our endeavor to bring um, podcasts to the interwebs. Um, Endeavors. Yeah. Yep. Endeavor. Yeah. There. That's it. that's my big word for the night. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm kind of excited. You know, we've we still got our 29 favorite people. Um, we'd love to get back up to 30 again who do help us a great deal by helping us with um, all of our server costs and things like that. And we really, really do appreciate that because, you know, if we can't afford to keep the servers up, there was a couple of podcasts there that they couldn't afford to keep the servers up. Yeah. The server costs were just so high that they couldn't afford it. Mm -hmm. um, and they had to shut down. So um, we're glad that you guys are able to help us out and, um, do that and then get us cool things. Now I did buy my um, blue snowball myself, but you know, soundboards, headsets, things like that stuff we need. Um, yeah. Uh, it's um, as soon as the, the program that we use right now starts going to um, subscription, which is actually making the show sound a lot better than it has in quite a while. Um, that money is going to be going towards that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That is a an epic. I mean, it's a great service. Um, good night, Wicked Wolf One Hundred and Four. You added a quite. It was a nice chat with him this evening. You're so wicked. Uh huh. All right, spanning it. <laughs> okay. So let's see what else we got going on. Okay, that's about it. So I think it's time for some. We got some big news. So let me get the bumper going. Okay. All right. Um, surprise update 17 hit today. <laughs> Yay. I, I just downloaded it too. I updated and I was like, whoa, this is taking a while. <laughs> yeah. I, I, for some reason, I didn't think it was going to hit until after they put us on the new servers, but I guess not. <laughs> Welcome to update 17, the Siege of Minas Tirith. Yep. I still have to turn on the game yet. Uh, it's all updated. I, I knew I had to do a show today. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I could go in and that could be the thing that I did this week, but I was like, no, because I'm just going to be rushing through it. So I'm just going to wait. When the show's over, then I'm going to be checking it out. Yeah, I will. I will do that too. Um, so we do have some stuff that I get to the patch notes. 
as it loads slowly. Oh, I already had them up. Okay. New region. Old uh, Anorian? Anor An Anorian. That's got one of the little things on the top of the O. I'm sure I'd said it wrong. Um, explore the beach besieged city of Minas Tirith, ancient seat of the kingdom of Gondor. Outside the fortress city, the enemy has broken through the walls of Pelennor Field, and their forces now assemble and prepare for the assault to come. North of those broken walls is the, in the countryside of Teleth Anor, yet more hosts of the enemy bear down upon Gondor. It is from here that Gondor hopes and watches for the coming of the Rohirrim. And while they wait, a young lord of Ker Andros finds himself beset by fierce bearded Easterlings known as Suha Su Alar? S U H A L A R. You know, I said earlier that you were the better reader. I, I, I think you're taking that back. <laughs> but these are words. These are big words. Let's go to the easy words. Two new epic battles. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> so experience Sauron's first assault on Minas Tirith through the two new epic battles. The defense of Minas Tirith is a solo duo and a three player. Um, and then the hammer of the underworld is a solo duo and six solo duo and six player. Mm. So we are fighting to hold the city gates. Oh. Bad. Uh, I'd like to see a 12. Yep. I, I know it's asking for much, but yeah, I'd like to see a 12. Yeah, that is a lot, but yeah, that would it's be. It's been a while. I mean, yeah, you, yeah. Um, but if I remember correctly, they said most of the stuff that people did were six, up to six, and that was about as big as people were running. Right. But I think for the right thing, people would come together and do 12. I think they would. I think if it was. If there was an epic battle that was 12 players, that was half the time and half of the awards, I think people would do it quite a bit. Um, um, David David says, Minas Morgul and Sirith Ungal for the new raid. That'd be kind of cool. That'd be very cool. Yeah. There are 13 exciting secondaries, including epic foes with a soft quote unquote failure condition at the end when the wave ends. Hmm. Um, and then they get lots of stars of merit and lots of supreme essences. Nice. And your battle promotions have been raised from 236 to 256. There is a new epic book, volume. Four, book four, Siege of the White City. Um, the city of Osgiliath has fallen to the enemy, and now you must flee with its defenders across the plains of Minas Tirith. Hmm. Um, you get to see Gandalf the White, um, Prince Imhenhil of Dol Amroth, and Denethor. Oh, I wonder if he's going to be singing. Denethor? Yeah. Well, he did in the movie. Denethor doesn't sing. Somebody sings. I remember there. Oh, Pippin he's eating. Sings. Pippin singing while he's eating. Denethor okay. eats. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and Pippin sings. And I fast forward through that part because it's gross. Okay. <laughs> the 13 chapter epic book is the new on ramp to the story. <laughs> so you can play it without having played the previous books, but they recommend you play the previous books. <laughs> Um, here's some coolness. Um, hope tokens have a three minute cooldown now instead of 15 minutes. Oh, wow. I thought that they dropped down that before. Oh, and you know what? That was a patch note thing. Yeah, that was an up. Yep. All right. What else do we got? Um, some floating people have been unfloated, including bingo. Um, they're giving lots of stuff are giving morgul crests now. Um, Let's see the, oh, the market medallion acquisition rates for the Sambrog and Glinghant instances were unintentionally high. So they have reduced those. So if you were going in and farming that. That's over. It, it's over with. Oh, this would be a, a kind of important one to have fixed. Level scaled players should no longer lose their scaling buff when they teleport between the Enton Moors and Osgiliath. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> that would be 
a little important. Don't Whoa. You know? <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> um, let's see what else. Oh, monsters from level 99 and up now drop tier 9 and 10 crafting materials. Oh, nice. And um, we do have the new crafting tier then, right? Yep, we do have the new crafting tier. Where did that go? Um, nice. We, added, we don't have... New... Wait, we don't have any new relics, though, do we? I don't know that they said anything about that. I'm just trying to find where they said something about the... Um... Oh, it's down here in Grand Crafting. But let's get to the important part of the cos- about cosmetic weapons. Are you ready for this? Yeah. You can now turn off your weapons when they are sheathed by clicking the new eye icons on the cosmetic outfit page. So you can still leave them on and not have to take them off and fill up your inventory with them, but nobody will see them when they're sheathed. Oh, that's in pretty com- nice. Cosmetic weapon visibility rules have been loosened. We have set up a number of categories for items that can be interchanged with each other. All one-handed weapons, including cosmetic-only items, all shields, two-handed clubs, swords, implements, and two-handed hammers, axes, and halibuds. All other categories, such as staff spear, etc., can only be interchanged with other staff spears, etc., um, and you will no longer waste a die trying to die shields in the wardrobe. Okay, but I still can't run around, around with dual shields, right? Yes, I believe you can run around awesome. with dual shields. Yes. I'll log in right now. Okay. No, wait, <laughs> wait, we're done. And then when using a fishing cup coal, you can now cosmetically, um, you can cosmetically. You said as a weapon? No, when using a fishing pole, you can now only have another fishing pole cosmetically equipped. It was a little weird to be fishing with my beer stein, but it worked. <laughs> okay. Crafters now have access to the 10th crafting tier, the Anorian crafting tier. They use popular Anorian Skarn, Zircon, and Tattered Anorian parchments to craft items for level 100 characters. Hmm. All crafting nodes can now be harvested while mounted. Oh. All crafting materials back to 500, <laughs> except for the stuff that you've got that's in your inventory that's left over. Like the stuff that they don't use anymore, that doesn't stack. It's okay. obsolete. Um, and then they've run across a couple of things like turtle something or others that don't stack. There is no longer a distinction between vegetable grain and pipeweed farmlands. There is only one kind of farmland. Hmm. Okay. East Gondor craft nodes have been replaced with their tier 10 craft nodes, also found in Old and Orion. Um, we talked about the monsters dropping um, the 99 up. So that includes monsters in Belfala, Central Gondor, and Eastern Gondor. Um, crafting nodes in the Engine Mars have been upgraded to tier 10. Oh. And crafting materials now drop from various level 99 plus containers and mobs. Nice. Very cool. Yep. Um, looks like they've uh, increased more tiers for unlo- unlocking your imbued, imbued le- legacies. Really? Yeah. DPS Those and main like item. really high already. DPS main item legacies have been granted four more available tiers and can un- unlock an additional four. That's eight. Hmm. Okay, Turbine. I hope you update Relic soon. I okay. think we're still at level... Ten. I almost want to say, like, level... 90s stuff level 85 stuff uh, i don't know all i know is i had to use a scroll to take the 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 relics uh, the stuff off my bridle mm-hmm. because i couldn't afford to craft the level of bridal stuff for my war steed that I, I couldn't afford it oh and it's not like i'm a p- poor i mean it mm-hmm. you know in that stuff but i just i mean we're talking you know 20 or thirty thousand shards for for one relic at, at level 100 on this thing and i'm like no i'll just take them off and put them back on again well, can't you do what most people do on Brandywine is just run around with uh, no armor on and just spam everybody for gold? I mean, that works pretty good. Oh, my, my underwear is not that pretty on Lodro. Well, that's, that's fine. It works. I don't know why, but it does. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> or you can do the Landerville trick, which is stand yeah. in the middle of, of Brie and just play music all day. Yeah, you can do that. That's that's. I'll go with that trick. I like. Depends that on what server you're on. Exactly. Exactly. Knowledge well, is power. Yes. <laughs> um, David says the good relics are level eighty five relics. Uh those are the super merged um, 
awesome ones, yes. But I think the other ones past that are level 95. So regardless, we we need new relics. We do. It's been mm-hmm. too long. Yeah. Yeah. Um I did the the test so I could get the free TP. Um on toilet paper? You got toilet yep, paper. Yeah, I got the free toilet paper. I should be getting it next <laughs> week. Um we crashed Bob Squared. Oh, really? Yeah, they crashed Bob Squared in the first 10 minutes. <laughs> oh well no, no no they said that we didn't crash it they said they didn't have enough memory and they had to bring it down to put up more virtual memory we crashed bob that's called <laughs> crashing yeah we crashed bob square we <laughs> he, he he flat out blew up a couple of times <laughs> you couldn't queue you know when you got on there world chat was just oh. full of lag oh. i got stuck in the newbie area because i didn't copy a character over um, there were Balrogs in Bree. There were Saruman's in Bree. <laughs> One of them was building a tower to the end of the world and punting people off, like into the sky. Um, so the the, the the entire two hour window, there was about 30 minutes that I could actually get in. And then they're like, you're in. Could you please get out? Some more people are going to get in. Seriously. <laughs> wow. Um it said the um, Vivian said the server had more folks on it than even the busiest Brandywine nights before they had to bring it down to add more power. Mm-hmm. Wow. Um, well, Freela, you, you, it, when you give free turbine points away, you get things done. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, Freelon says, thanks to everyone who made it tonight. We learned some invaluable information. We'll be doing another one of those in the not so distant future. And we'll also do a wrap up here on the forums next week. For those curious to know what they learned from the event, nice. the prizes will be awarded later during the week for everyone who participated. You know, they'll pull the data, the login data. Mm-hmm. Um, this is what I found interesting. They did determine how many users each machine can handle, which is 800. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. The server machines? The server machine, each virtual machine. It's a virtual machine. Oh, okay. Each virtual machine can handle 800 players at a time they had two online this last test to confirm that the performance issues did not kick in until they got to 1700 players Mm -hmm. Um, so they will be using that data to bulk up the bull roar environment as well as the other servers being built out they're going to retest on november 7th from 12 to 2 that's during extra life maybe we should play on bull roar from 12 to 2 eastern we might we just might. Um, I'm starting to finalize that schedule for Extra Life, so I'll, uh, I'll copy that into the chat. I don't know if it'll pop up or not. But yeah, we might. Anyway, it was crazy. Um, you know, people were screaming about the lag, you know, that, yeah. But we, uh, yeah, it, they had to bring it down a couple times to bulk stuff up and put it back up again. Nice. Bob squared, got to work out. Yep, that's good. That's real good. All right. That's the way you now, test it. Yes. Now, I know everybody who has always wanted to try to test alpha stuff for Lord of the Rings Online. The new pal- round of the Palantir preview program is starting up. There's a link in the show notes. Send them an email. Tell them why you would like to be on the preview. You are, If you are a, a member of the Palantir program, it does not keep you from being a member of the Players Council. The, um, the, the GM that was is doing this suggest that you never tell anybody that you were ever on palantir just for your sanity mm-hmm. <laughs> um, <laughs> even after you're off of palantir just so you know just don't tell people <laughs> mm-hmm. you know um and then of course there is an nda for being in palantir while you're in it but that wouldn't stop you from being on the players council that's cool yeah uh for people that don't really exactly know what palantir is basically it's the uh alpha mm-hmm. super super alpha um you're gonna be seeing a lot of things that possibly aren't even created all the way yet and it's not something where you just kind of join and play it's more testing they want people in there that give feedback because the more feedback that they get early on will help them out later on when things start going over to bull roarer Bull Roar is when they when they announce Bull Roar, that's the time to go and play over there and see how things work. But not this server. The Palantir is all things just being built and um, just basically um, the framework. 
So if you don't feel like testing and riding the turbine, you know, like the things that you find and things that um, you have found that are broken, then you might not want to be on this. Yeah, they're looking for feedback there. And, and of course, you can't tell anybody what you're seeing. So it's not like you can get in there and like um, tell everybody, hey, this is what they're planning to do or this never made it in the game because you are under an NDA. Yeah. So you can't. And, and a lot of those things um, might make it and a lot of those things might not make it. Yeah. So if they decide to go ahead and cut something that they never announced in the first place, then you're running around saying that they're going to put it in. <laughs> <laughs> you look like a liar. <laughs> yeah. All right. And that's pretty much, I thought we were going to have no news. And guess what? Update 17 dropped this morning. Woo. That was news. Thank you for not doing that on Wednesday. <laughs> Thank you, Turbine. <laughs> yep. All right. That's it for news. All right, I have one announcement in community. Um, winter stock three is coming now. This is like weather stock, but in the winter, and they don't do like a big, huge concert. Basically, they have concert series and they do it outside of Thorin's Hall in that little frozen pond area. Um, that is to between the mine and Thorin's Gate, there. Mm -hmm. Um, so it is going to be January 15th through 18th, um, 2016 at Thorns Gate in, on the Landerville server. Um, there's no competition, no carabane, carabane, just music, fireworks, and pie. Prob more than likely there will be pie. Um, band sign up is to be announced, but it's like three days and they like play from like in the morning to like midnight or one in the morning uh, server time. Just different bands have different slots and it's, it's pretty cool. And you get to wear your winter outfits and, you know, you, and play the really cool, you know, harps from the, the, uh, what's that frozen area? Uh, Forakel? Forakel, yeah. So, yeah, it's kind of cool. And that's all I had community. So, would you like to tell our lovely listeners, um, about that, that, that I love them? Yeah, you love them. And you have some deals for them too, right? That's right. Let me scroll to that. Okay. While you're doing that, um, you, you showed me a video today of Ark. Oh, don't tell them about that one. Not that video, the other one. Okay. Um, about Ark Survival Evolved and, you know, the new biome with snow and people writing dire wolves and stuff. And all I can yeah. think of was Forakel. <laughs> I know, right? Like Forakel. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you want to. Uh, oh, how do I transition this? Um, play in Forakel with awesome graphics and you're looking for a new PC, then check out doghousesystems.com and use the coupon code MMO Reporter to get a 120 gigabyte solid state drive in addition to the one terabyte drive that comes with their system. And if you want to listen to an audiobook about Forakel, uh huh, uh huh. Uh -huh. Go to audibletrial.com slash MMO reporter to get one free month, which is one credit for one free book. And they talk about Forkel in the Silmarillion. Okay. Hey, there we go. Mm hmm. You can also contact us. You can email us at lotro.reporter at gmail.com. You can follow us on Twitter at Lotro Reporter. You can check us out on Facebook. Just search for Lotro Reporter. Our Facebook page has been hopping lately. I don't know why, but lots of people are liking our Facebook page. Nice. Um, you can leave us a voicemail at 616-666-6778. Be sure to check us out on YouTube at youtube.com slash user slash MMO Reporter Network. You'll want to subscribe to that channel because there's cool stuff that comes out of there. Mm -hmm. You want to check out our website at literalreporter.com and be sure to so, uh, it's follow on Twitch. Follow us on twitch.tv slash MMO Reporter so you know when our, all of our shows go live. We have, we have extra life coming yes we have extra life coming on november 7th we're going to be starting at what time uh eight o'clock a.m central okay which is 9 a.m eastern 7 a.m 6 a.m 6 a.m 
Ugh. 6 a.m. Pacific. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we'll- far, the list is um, for Central Time. 8 a.m. will be Trove. Uh, 11 a.m. will be Terra. 2 p.m. will be Rift. 5 p.m. will be Guild Wars 2. 8 p.m. will be Wildstar. 11 p.m. will be Arc. 2 a.m. will be The Secret World, and 5 a.m. will be Star Trek Online. We could switch some of these games out or change them around on the schedule a little bit, depending if people that want to come and get involved and possibly even play with us during these times, uh, things may get switched around a little bit. Yeah, so let us know. I I cannot be there for the entire 24 hours this time, and I wasn't planning on it. But um, if I will get my 24 hours in if I have to um, stream. If you have to? If if I have to, I, I was gonna say if I have to stream Hello Kitty online, but I don't have an account for that. So, oh, okay. um, yeah, I don't know. I I've got some games that I can stream on. I I have a Twitch channel. Do you? I do. Yes. I think I've do, used. Do it you once. speak with an accent on your channel? No. You'd get views. Uh, I I it, it's my name, so I get views <laughs> because it's a, it's a girl's name. Okay, I see. <laughs> I see. Yeah, yeah. The one time I was streaming, I was practicing streaming with the OBS, and somebody asked me if I talked. And I'm like, not today. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry if that was one of our listeners. But... Uh, real quick, if uh, you guys don't know what Extra Life is, uh, Carrie, what hospital are you playing for? I am playing for the Cox um, system in Springfield, Missouri. Um, Basically, it's Children's Miracle Network Hospitals. Mm -hmm. We're playing to raise money for those particular hospitals. I choose one in Missouri because that's where I grew up. And that is the one that has helped my family out the most. I believe Chris and his gang up there plays for BC Children's. Mm -hmm. Uh, You play for... Wisconsin's Children's Hospital. Wisconsin's Children's. Yeah. Um, there's a whole list of hospitals that you can pick. You're welcome to join our team, everybody. We would love to have you join us and raise money as well. Mm-hmm. Um, for the well, you all should know if you've been playing Lotro for very long that this was Rick Heaton's baby in Lotro and shepherded along with that. And then he, when he left Lord of the Rings uh, and to, left Turbine, he went to become the community manager of um, Extra Life. Extra Life, yeah. Mm-hmm. And Dream in, job for him. And is enjoying his, his job very, very much. He's got much, much travel to do. Um, I did get to sit and have lunch with him again at PAX and listen to some of his great stories and some of the stuff he's exciting things he's doing and how much he likes his job. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I you, mean, get, it's still you, you get to travel. Management. You get to travel all over the place, talk to so many people, and it's all for charity to help all kids. Yeah, it's all for uh, the kids. How, how much better of a job can you get? Mm hmm. Exactly. Other than like sitting down and eating ice cream while you work at Dairy Queen. I get sick and tired of ice cream. I don't. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you would like to um, follow me on Twitter, you can find me at the Carrie Mac. It's T H E C R C A R I M A C. And how can they, where they can find you in more than one place on the internet, can't they, Leonor? Holy crap. They can find me uh, on Twitter, Tumblr. Google Plus. Uh, I'll talk about Google Plus in a second. Um, Facebook and YouTube. Uh, all Leonor, L A Y A N O R. Uh, that and it used to be a problem with Google Plus because I actually had seven Google Plus accounts. Oh my! Yes, it's taken me about a week to find and track them all down because I don't remember the emails that I used or the passwords I used on those emails. <laughs> but I cleared it all up. There is now one. Leonor on Google Plus, at least for this moment, before uh, somebody makes another Leonor. Okay. You trolls, you. Well, that's why I am the Carrie Mac because somebody already had Carrie Mac as a Twitter handle. <laughs> <laughs> and you can also email me at Leonor at HelloKitty.com. I kid you not, that is my email. Yep, he found mm-hmm. one. It was pretty amazing. Mm hmm. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for downloading. Thank you for listening. And we do, as always, to hope to see you in game. And we'd love to see you hang out with us on November 7th for Extra Life.
Thanks for watching the video, everybody. Don't forget to check out all the other podcasts at mmoreporter.com or by clicking on any of the links here. And please check out our Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash mmoreporter. Thanks, everyone, and see you in game.